can't believe it's been over a year now since I first took a look at Together BNB, a game which really defines the old adage of something being so bad that it's good, and a video that really seemed to blow up at the time. I mean, damn. Here we are now in 2022, and while everyone's off probably still playing Elden Ring or convincing themselves that that New Horizon game was worth the price tag of picking up a PS5, here I am checking out Together BNB again. A still unfinished game, and something I'm still unsure as to whether or not it's supposed to be a hunting sim, a dating sim, a cooking sim, or just some horrible amalgamation of all of those things. You came just the right time. Now, summing up what you've missed up until this point shouldn't be too hard. Basically, Together BNB is an errand simulator where you're playing as a dude named James who's inherited a BNB from your missing brother. A BNB that happens to have three oddly attractive women staying there, with the pretense being that you're going to be able to court them. Now you have to pay attention. Only up until this point, you spent more time running around and picking up their groceries and shooting the local wildlife more than anything else. This was, however, for that first early build of the game that I played like over a year ago, which really was pretty bare bones and relied on the player to make their own fun, considering otherwise it was only about two to three hours long. But now here we are a year later, older, wiser, and with less hair, and apparently the campaign is now close to being 90% complete, with a whole bunch of new features added in, which ironically has actually made the game worse. I mean, when you improve something that's so bad that it's good, but not enough that it makes it good, well, then it just becomes bad. Nevertheless, you can bet there's going to be value to be had here with the weird and wild world of Together B and B. I mean, otherwise, what the hell else am I doing here? Will you show me? I'd be right happy to. Now, before I get too far into things, I do want to mention too that this video is sponsored by Steel Series. These guys make really good keyboards, gaming mice, gaming pads, and headsets. Right now, I'm using the Apex 7 keyboard. I've got the Rival 5 mouse. Not to mention their huge ass LED prism cloth. And I'm pretty stoked to be able to offer a discount on all of these products, along with everything else in their catalog. To get that discount, it's really easy. Just use the promo code GMAN at checkout and you'll get 12% off your next order, which is, you know, 12% more than you'd save otherwise. So head on over to stillseries.com to get started and yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. So I'm happy to say that they haven't ruined the fundamentals here of what makes Together B&B what it is. So sweet. You can still go outside and hunt exotic animals, you can stay home and keep an eye on your fellow tenants, you can give them gifts, you can go wine tasting or chill out in your projector room watching cinematic masterpieces. Our dad had taught us not to be ashamed of our dicks. Along with performing groundbreaking scientific experiments, the likes of which society is yet to understand, let alone comprehend. <laughs> You can run around on foot or you can drive around in a car, which is an outright all-terrain vehicle. Hmm, not bad. Or you can fast travel to already discovered locations. About all that's missing is radio towers to climb and outposts to take over. More importantly though, there is a story underneath all of this. Well, I mean, there is something at least. You know, characters open their mouths and then sounds resembling words often come out. I'm looking forward to taste more of your dishes. I think I'm beautiful. Fuck. Can it be green or gray? Darling, I'm already changed. What a story, Mark. And one thing's for sure, man, this latest update sure doesn't waste anyone's time because as soon as the whole thing loads in, I get a phone call from a woman named Isabel who wants me to come over and fix her leaking faucets. And look, if that ain't a euphemism, well, then I have no idea what is. Oh, no one's around here. And the water's been flowing. In what's a shock to absolutely no one, she's a beautiful 20-something year old looking woman. What I need most now is a strong man. And I don't think there's any other purpose to this character aside from it just being another notch on our main character's belt. Let's do it again next time. Aside from that though, the general plot still seems to be that you're trying to find the whereabouts of your brother Mark, though that does kind of get thrown to the wayside. Instead, focusing on this weird marital issue between Logan the gun store owner and his wife Sophie, who's apparently cheating on him. Don't worry about that bitch. Yeah, I can't imagine why she'd be cheating on you, dude. As it turns out, the one she's cheating on is none other than one of your tenants, Mark. I guess when this guy ain't standing around in a pool exuding his Giga Chad aura, he's out around town cavorting with married women. I can explain. Not that that's much of a brag, though, considering I think the total amount of married women in this town is, well, one. This I know. Either way though, I go to Logan's store to see what's going on, and I love to how this guy's just sound asleep at the counter, you know, surrounded by all these guns and ammo. I mean, out of all the storefronts you don't want to fall asleep at, I've got to say that a gun store's probably up there. 
After this, I got a call from my favorite ambiguously aged looking Emily, who now wants me to cook a meal for her. And this is actually one of the main new mechanics in the game, which shows off a surprisingly complex cooking system, able to dice up meat and vegetables, boil or fry things, and add in ingredients like salt, pepper, broth, and cooking wine. Or for the gratification of the ultimate critics, this gang of brain-dead bimbos who may or may not be robots. Delicious. Delicious. For this first attempt, Emily wants me to cook her borscht, and look, I've got nothing against borscht, it's a sour soup originating in Eastern Europe and Northern Asia, according to Wikipedia. Its main ingredient is beetroot, but it can also include cabbage, carrots, onions, and potatoes, and can also contain meat or just vegetables, you know, sounds delicious. But before I can get to making it, Eric holds his produce hostage and has me running around an orange orchard plucking down 12 of these things for a client of his. Will you pick the oranges for me? It's easy. He then holds up his end of the deal, but makes a really weird remark about giving me some of his secret sauce. There you go, the secret sauce. That's kind of weird, right? And again, I don't know if it's supposed to be another euphemism. You must add my secret sauce to the dish. I'll get it for you in the warehouse. Bullshit! Alright, so at this point I gotta go around Eric's store to buy all these other ingredients. And right, let's see here, I gotta get beef, I got onion, carrot, potato, yada yada yada. Alright, simple. Funnily enough too, man, I spent this whole sequence looking through the grocery store like I was actually in one in real life. Do you know what I mean? Reading the labels on the shelves to see what contained what and all that kind of stuff. And I gotta say, this has to be the most expensive grocery shop in the world. I mean, this guy's charging $300 for a single potato, $450 for a carrot, and $1,000 for beef. Is this store set in some kind of weird commune separated from the rest of civilization? Where fresh produce is some kind of incredibly rare and hard to come by commodity? I don't know, judging by the shelves overflowing with stock though, I kinda doubt it. BULLSHIT! All up, I had to spend close to $4,000 on this cooking endeavor, and I mean shit man, at that point just cut your losses and go to a restaurant. Thank you. Now after this, I was feeling a little bit light in my back pocket, if you know what I mean. So I decided to go off and do a little bit of hunting to recoup my losses from cooking dinner for a woman who I'm almost certain is a non-sentient android. Thankfully though, making money in Together B&B ain't all that hard. You only need to go off and kill a few animals and then turn their skins into Logan for a pretty hefty cash bonus. And this is really what it's all about, you know? Just one man outside, alone with nature, running around with an assault rifle and infinite ammo, gunning down innocent deer with absolutely no precision or finesse whatsoever. <laughs> then clumsily desecrating their corpses for future profit. There's a line of dialogue later in the game where someone says something about animals and pretty girls. Animals and sexy ladies. Yeah, that's the one. And it really sums up, I think, the Together b, &B experience. Thanks for everything. I gotta say though, being out hunting kinda reminded me just how good this game can look at times. Although it's got that whole Unreal Engine 4 stock asset thing going for it, there's still a pretty long draw distance and decent enough sound design to make the surroundings engrossing. And as bad as it is, I think just going off and hunting these poor animals is on some level still kind of enjoyable. At one point I went hunting at night time and that reminded me how effective this would be if it was a horror game. It started to rain and there was a heavy thunderstorm with lightning cracking off in the distance which eerily lit up my surroundings. And although I knew nothing was coming to get me, I just was on edge the entire time. Because also around this time I got like a super creepy phone call with the person on the other end acting all weird and mysterious. Is Mac there? I'll come. A few days. Reminds me of those old phone calls you'd get when you were playing The Sims. And I'm just gonna say, it's not too late to introduce a backstory here, where they reveal that this whole place is the testing grounds for some kind of android nightmare factory, and you're a human guinea pig unknowingly sent in to test out how they communicate with humans. And it turns out that Mark's been sent in as an undercover agent to try to slowly make you aware of what's happening and, you know, help you escape. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, eventually I found myself back in the kitchen where I had a piping hot bowl of borscht to make for Emily. And I think it would have actually been easier to cook this thing in real life at first because this sure is a confusing system. It was kind of like being in a real kitchen, you know what I mean? Like I had to check all the cupboards to get my bearings, find where all the knives and the pots and pans were, you know, all that stuff. It's kind of like when you go to your mate's house and you go into all of their cupboards trying to find out where they keep their cups, you know, same thing. Now as for the borscht, well, look, it's a highly technical dish, all right, requiring surgical precision and fanatical attention to detail when it comes to the ingredients and the recipes. Are you me? 
First off, you've got to dice up the beef, which anyone with a steady hand and a working set of eyes should be able to accomplish easily. Then you've got to fry the beef in 30 mils of olive oil, but look, I've seen enough Jamie Oliver videos on YouTube to know that ain't gonna do jack shit. So let's be a bit more generous, shall we? How about 300 mils? Yeah, I hope she likes her food extra oily, along with her cholesterol through the roof, because that's what she's gonna get. Thank you. Next up, you gotta dice your vegetables, which, you know, seems simple enough. You just chuck them all down on the table and get to chopping. Only I seem to be so bad at it that the vegetables become self-aware and try to escape. Then after that, you chuck this thing down on the stove with some broth and cooking cream, and it all starts to come together. And yeah, check it out. Truly a fantastic feast for the senses. God damn! And you know what, for all the cuts and the bruises, the blood, sweat and tears in that kitchen, it all boils down to this, no pun intended, the moment of truth. And this is what it's all about, man, getting to watch the smile on someone's face as they tuck into my culinary masterpiece. And I don't see Emily doing any projectile vomiting, so it must at least be edible. Tastes very authentic. You're really good. Oh my god, she actually likes it too. You're really good. <laughs> And check that shit out, a 4 star rating, not to mention $3,600 in tips, I mean that's almost enough to cover the bill of the meal itself. Now at this point it starts to get a bit interesting, because Emily now gives me the location for finding and hunting a new animal to kill, a rare black lamb. And you gotta be turned on by a woman who endorses the killing of endangered animals, all for the sake of a good meal. You see, much like that wine tasting minigame, it turns out all the girls have meals that they prefer, and after cooking for them a few times, they'll then give you a recipe and a hunting location for each one of these new animals. You got the lambs, along with bears and bison. Bison who are so dumb that I almost kind of feel bad for killing them. Anyway, after that, once you cook up this new meal, you end up unlocking new outfits. Like this culturally appropriated little number that Emily wears. Crikey. But the reward doesn't stop there, because after the meal, she keeps on going by performing this bizarre belly dancing routine, I guess as a way of thanking me, where it starts to look like her boobs are possessed. It makes the jiggle physics in those old Dead or Alive games look tame in comparison. It's all your fault. Nana, on the other hand, wants me to cook her bear meat stew in red wine sauce. I mean, come on, man. What's wrong with something simple like spag bowl? So I've got to go out there again and hunt me down some bears. Then combine their meat with carrots, onion, bacon, parsley, wine, and ketchup? Seriously, ketchup? It's all your fault. I've got to dice the bear meat. I've got to dice the bacon. Oh, don't worry about dropping stuff on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Three second rule boil the meat, fry the vegetables, and then combine all that stuff together. And again, I mean, the results, you know, they speak for themselves, let's be honest. My disappointment is immeasurable. Nana then shows up to eat it, dressed in something that looks like an unlockable outfit from an old survival horror game, and chows down, none the wiser. You're having wit thoughts, aren't you? Yeah, I am having wired thoughts, and it sure doesn't involve you dancing. Oh fuck, she's already started. Oh god. You know what this is like? It's like when a little kid wants to show you something really lame, and because they're a kid and you're not a psychopath, you entertain them and you let them do it, even though in your head you just want to tell them how fucking stupid it is. This is what that's like. I mean, look, I like a woman dancing around in a sexy outfit as much as the next man, but this is just too much. It's too much! Now you don't have to do this, I mean really all it does is unlock new recipes. It actually gives you a reason to go out there and hunt animals, not to mention you can play around with the new cooking mechanic and unlock new outfits. You know what? No, you, you kind of need to do it. Itadakimasu! Once you've done this for all of the three girls, there's no real point to cooking anymore. Inevitably bringing you back to the main storyline, where again you're playing the part of an errand boy. Doing all these menial tasks for these girls, with there being a faint glimmer of hope that as a way of saying thank you, they'll at some point take their clothes off and sit on my face. Thanks. It starts off chatting to Nana, who wants me to go into town and buy her pink hair dye, so she can audition for a nudie magazine. Yeah, that's an actual plot point in this game. Please, can you go to the store and buy it for me? You then chat to Vera, who's acting like she's got a bit too much into the wacky tobacco, before then running into Mark, which turns into a sequence out of LA Noir, where I start grilling the dude about why he's having an affair with Logan's Sorry. wife. Your mom and dad are uh, happily married? This I know. She told me. I think your father was violent with your mother. I think they weren't very happy, and you should tell me, young lady, 
Huh? I don't use perfume. Why? Some of your mother's jewelry was missing. Can you describe her things? I can't explain. Then I'm out shopping, I'm getting candles, I'm buying groceries, I'm digging out flowers, and all to be staring at a closed door. Take care now. Bye bye then. Yeah, about all I'm getting for all of this errand work is more doors shut in my face than a Jehovah's Witness. Only, maybe I spoke too soon because right after this, I get another call from Isabel, who really doesn't beat around the bush. I'm not wearing anything under my skirt. Damn, bitch, be cool. At this point though, after I get another fade to black screen, I start to think that I might be missing something, and in fact, it turns out that I am. Because if you go to the game's website, there's an R18 patch you can download, which unlocks all of this adult content. And I'm talking full-on adult content, the likes of which my fragile mind can't even comprehend. And I put this straight to work with Isabel in so many different positions that you think we were wrestling. Even some in the back alley behind her shot with her head sticking out the window. Yeah, imagine walking by and seeing that going on. The final mission for this early access build has me helping out Nana as she's doing a live stream to her followers because, yeah, that's right, apparently she's an influencer. Lol. So I go out and find all these fireworks, planting them around the valley for her big finale. Then for some reason during the stream, she leaves the room, falls asleep on the toilet, I might add, as a fucking fire then breaks out in her bedroom from all these candles she had laying around. Fire! And again, this is an actual plot point in the game. So I got to rush downstairs, grab a fire extinguisher, and then put the fire out, applying the traditional CPR method to resuscitate her so she doesn't die from smoke inhalation. Finally, the next day, after this long series of mundane and repetitive tasks that were totally selfless and not carried out without any kind of ulterior motive, Nana rewards me for all of my hard work. In the bedroom, in the bathroom, even on the veranda for all the wealth to see. And hey, yeah, what do you think of that one, Mark? You dickhead. We're gonna be in the pool, we're gonna be in the clubhouse, we're gonna be all over that shuffleboard court, and I dare you to keep us out. And I dare you to keep me out! Turning Nana into a stage 5 clinger is about where this build comes to an end, though, and I do have to admit that they sure have packed a lot more crap into this than I thought they would. It somehow went from being a game about just mostly shooting animals and nothing, to mostly shooting animals, cooking, having sex with women, and then nothing. I'm really sorry. It's even managed to drag its way up to a very positive rating on Steam at the moment, and considering how low it was last year, well, that's a full-on redemption arm. Oh, thank you. I think what's going to make Together B&B more fun to play in the future is if they can fill in that empty open world and make it less, you know, empty. Being able to go off and explore and actually find something worth discovering is going to make it way more enticing and give the game world a lot more purpose. They also need way more things to do with the girls, you know, aside from just wine tasting, talking, changing their clothes, and bonking. Nice throw. One thing they really need to add in too is the option to skip through text messages and dialogue, because right now the pacing for that is so fucking slow, it's just outright mind-numbing. Alright, alright. Let's change the topic. I kind of think it's insane how they have a quality of life mechanic like this app on your in-game phone, which can spawn your car to your location at any time, but they lack the basic convenience of having icons come up on the screen to show you where to go for your next objective. And again, man, I'm just going to say it for the third and final time, that horror subplot is going to work. You just need to have James coming across some kind of secret underground facility where he finds all these other androids that have become self-aware and start hunting him down. Then you just kind of build it up from there. And you know, at least that's how I do it. At this stage, it's just gearing up to be yet another crappy early access title that happens to have adult content. And I mean, look, we've got a bunch of those already as it is. We don't need another one. You gotta be kidding me. Oh well, maybe when I check back in another 12 months later, there'll be some more to show for it. Bye. For now though, science calls.